any any more uh, uh, situations like that, please don't hesitate to uh, to stop me. So I just want to touch base about CV Fiber. Most of you know who we are. Uh, we use no town tax dollars. That's that's a critical aspect of us. We are also volunteer driven, as I'll talk about in a minute. But our purpose is to provide a minimum access to 100 over 100. That means 100 uh, millibits per second down and 100 up. Uh, that, that kind of service is rather unique these days, uh, but the intention is to make CV fiber somewhat future-proof by making this, this type of service, this symmetrical service, by making this our minimum. And we will build up from there. We will also be offering uh, 500, one gig and two big uh, symmetrical service. And having symmetrical service is actually extremely important, especially if you're doing anything that transfers pictures, uh, Zoom meetings. You know, if, if you had a gig service, you could have multiple Zoom meetings going on at the same time, multiple family members. You could be doing online classes that would... Re, re, uh, require uploading and downloading it at, at, at uh, you know while you're in the class, uh, any kind of medical imagery, anything that requires uh, imagery to be back and forth on the on the internet. Uh, the higher your service speed, the more reliable that's going to be, and the the better quality you're going to have. So 100 100 is the minimum of what we're what we are going to provide. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of our some of the big questions today, and I'm going to tell you what I know for sure. OK, I'm going to start with who we are, talk about when folks are going to start getting high speed Internet from CV Fiber, and I'm going to talk about what it's going to cost. First of all, this is the I promise this is the most horrible slide in the deck. Um, but I, I, I wanted those folks that are a part of our team to see that they're recognized, even though I'm not going to name everybody. But what's really important here is that we are volunteers. We are volunteer based. And with this with this volunteer base, we are we are moving this organization that includes our partnership and our contractors and, of course, our executive director and treasurer. But. What's, what's really important here is the size of the team, the community that we've built with our partners, which is, which is absolutely amazing. And then the fact that this volunteer team is leveraging the work of contractors from multiple disciplines and making sure that everybody has their oars in the water at the same time and we're all working together. And, and so far that's been, that's been happening for us and we're gonna continue to work in that way. Moving the plan, moving forward here is very straightforward. It's similar to what we said in the last webinar. We are going to design, construct, we're going to test, we're going to go live, and we're going to install. And we're going to do it in that order. I have on the map here our 24 design areas that we call them DAs. We are starting up in the 12 o'clock region, if you will, where the, the two DAs, the brown and the and the, and the green DA, is where we're going to start. And our, our intention is to start construction in the next few weeks. We're going to test and go live at the, at the turn of the year, and we're going to start installations in January. I'll go into each of these in a little bit more uh, details in a minute, but I, a couple of things I'd like to point out. One is that each DA is approximately 50 miles of fiber. So what we're looking at for this year to construct is 100 miles of fiber, right? We're hanging fiber where it doesn't currently exist. The other part of this that's important is that it's going to take time. Building all of these DAs is going to take time. We're going to start in, in the two DAs that are highlighted within the box, and then we're going to go down one side of the clock and the other side of the clock. And we're going to be moving as fast as money and, and access will allow us to move. But consider this, a construction crew does about a mile a day. Those two DAs 
are are 100 miles. We're hoping to get another 600 miles done next year and then the, the remainder done in the following year. So we're we're moving forward and we're 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 starting construction this this season. Uh, design has some multiple parts to it. Uh, the data gathering is iterative. We've done quite a lot of data gathering, but there always seems to be a little bit more that's needed. We've completed our high-level design for the entire network. That's done. Uh, we have our, our detailed design right now. We have eight of those 24 DAs that I have shown are currently in, in somewhere in the detailed design phase. And the first DA where we're going to start construction that 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 plan is in final review by the VCBB. When that final review is complete, that's that final third party review. When that's complete, the plans for that DA are ready to go to the contractor. So we are Gary, getting- Gary, could you please define VCBB for our audience? Oh yes, uh, yes, certainly. Uh, the uh, v Vermont Community Broadband Board who oversees the funding that we're using, the grant monies that we're using, and who is really overseeing this program and designing the thresholds that we need to achieve, uh, designing uh, in part the standards that we need to achieve, and is also verifying they, they are the last word, they are the stewards of the, of the grant money that's being spent. Of course, we are also the stewards of the grant money that's being spent, but they are the stewards for the entire CUD program. And so they have hired a contractor that reviews our final detailed design. And that's the that's the third party review that's in the in in the bullets here. So each DA that that we walk through has to go through all of these design processes before we can get to construction. And our construction has multiple components to it. Uh, certainly the most consistent and persistent component are getting the appropriate easements and permits for everywhere we go. Again, we're, we're hanging fiber where fiber does not currently exist for the most part. Um, so the, the pole attachments need to be set up and we need to get a license for that. And there's a fair amount of work that needs to be done to the poles and the era, area around the poles in order to accept our fiber. Uh, and then we have certain areas where we're, where we're going underground and that has its own, its own engineering requirements as well as easements and permits. We have terminals uh, throughout our 24 DAs. We have a number of terminals that also need easements and permits because that's physical infrastructure that's gonna sit on a concrete pad, that's gonna get electrical power, that's gonna have backup power in many instances. Um, so, so we need easements and permits for that. Of course, we need the materials on hand in order to do the construction. And I wanna spend a minute here on construction management. Uh, first, let me say that this picture those actually are my neighbors. That's right across the road. We understand the importance of stewardship, I'll use that word again, of the community that we're hanging our fiber in. And as we, we move construction crews through the community, we, we know where we are, we recognize what we're doing. Our construction management is going to be performed by NRTC. They are the same folks that are doing our design work. So not only are they doing the design, they're going to verify that what has been built matches the requirements of that design, and they are going to ensure for us that that work is done safely and appropriately, and that we don't run into, to the, to the, the, the best extent that we can possibly control, we don't run into any problems moving through the terrain and moving through people's backyards and moving through their fields and farms as we hang our fiber. We're very conscious of that. Uh, these really are my neighbors in this picture. So it's, it's a very important part of construction and construction is not complete without that aspect of it um, being performed. So let me move on to our, to our next slide because 
Then the, uh, the important thing that we do next is we test and go live. And the reason we're testing is because we need to make sure that the network that we provide does what it's supposed to do reliably and to the to the to the full extent of its of its capacity. So there are a number of things that we need to do. We need a, to uh, su uh, supply network connections. We need to tap into the internet. We need to tap into our internet service provider. Uh, but we also need to do that with redundancy, meaning that we need to have multiple sources of access to the internet should any single source uh, problematically go down or, or have any kind of hiccup with it. We need to make sure that there's instantaneous switching to something that is active. And this is built into the network, but it, it into our network design, but it also needs to be secured through through a multiple access uh, avenues that can be switched on and off as needed. And that's the, the network resiliency. Then we also need to do our rollout testing to premises. Uh, there's, there's something called friendlies. These are uh, folks, that residences that, that we will use uh, to help us work out the bugs that we, especially in our in our early rollouts, but I'm sure this is going to happen throughout all of our rollouts. We're going to find that there's there needs to be some kind of a tweak that there might be a a connection that's not quite correct. These are the things that we'll we'll need to find out in our pre rollout testing, and all of this is required to ensure that the the the, the product that we're providing when folks do get the chance to subscribe and have installers come to their house, that the product that they're getting is going to be a product that they can rely on and that will work as close to 100% of the time as possible. Uh, these installations uh, really start with subscriber outreach. Folks know that we've been putting out on Front Porch Forum, um, and that's probably how you knew to be here, but one of the things that folks maybe don't know is that we're getting ready to start up a marketing campaign. Um, I believe this will be a very unique type of marketing campaign considering what we're doing, reaching out to the underserved uh, in the area that we're reaching out. Uh, but we are hiring a, a contractor to help us design that campaign. We are also doing something that's extremely important through a firm called Crowd Fiber. Uh, they also work with Waitsfield Telecom. Um, they currently use them for their own uh, subscribers. And this is this is going to be a portal on our website that will be absolutely seamless to the to the folks that go to our website and that are looking to subscribe. And they will they will be able to see where their their address is in the construction schedule. They will be able to pick and choose a, a type of service that they that they prefer and sign up for it. They will be able to schedule uh, their installation all through our all through our website um, in 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 a, in a seamless way that is that is integrated with Waitsfield Telecom, who will be actually doing those installations and providing the service for CV Fiber. So we're, we're going to have this. Seamless integration that's going to work through our website where folks can track where we are. We're going to have a marketing campaign that is going to broadcast uh, through various outlets where we are and which areas are, are ready and which areas are going to be ready in the near future uh, so that folks can understand where we are. This is, this, is, this is all rolling up now with our initial construction starting, starting in October. So our marketing campaign and our crowd fiber rollout is going to be kind of concurrent with that, with that initial initial construction work. So that in the what we're hoping is that come the beginning of the calendar year that we'll be able to start performing installations and that folks will be able to get on the website and see see where their where their address is lined up for maybe March or April or February or. And they can sign up for installations uh, right there off of our website. So this is not yet live, but our intention is that this will this will be live uh, 
in the beginning of the new year. Now, I've put some dates out there. You know, we've committed ourselves to an October, uh, November construction start in those two DAs that, that we've identified. And I've walked through all of the different things that need to line up in order for that to happen so that we can actually have installations starting in the beginning of the new year. Uh, there's a lot that needs to line up. Uh, there are potentials for delay. Um, I'm not hedging here. What I'm what I'm what I'm doing is explaining. Um, we know that there are possibilities for make ready delay, and we have started very early uh, with coordination, uh, especially with WEC, because of the tremendous overlap in the DAs where we're starting with WEC territory, and they've they've been extraordinarily helpful in working with us in, in getting our DAs cleared so that we can get poll licenses and get make ready uh, online. But advanced coordination is something we're gonna continue to do throughout our construction process. Um, and we're also tentatively going to have to do some alternative design. If we get out in the field and find out that make ready is just too much of a burden, uh, we, we may do, need to go underground. We may need to shift the route a little bit uh, we need to be flexible in order to do that. Uh, many people have heard about supply chain problems and the the delays that come with not being able to get materials. And we've been warned from day one that materials are going to be a big problem. So what we did was advance purchase. Uh, we're talking about doing 100 miles of construction uh, in October, November timeframe this winter. Um, We've purchased 400 miles of materials. Now, we haven't gotten delivery on 400 miles of, of materials because some of those lead times are many months, but we are also accepting partial delivery. So if we've ordered 10 of something, but and it takes 10 to do our 400 miles, but we only need two of them to do those first 100 miles, we're taking partial delivery of two and we're not holding up delivery of the, of the entire order for 10, and we've worked this out with our material providers. Uh, in addition, we're also working with our uh, adjacent CUDs to see if it's possible to do some material swapping. Uh, if we're shy an item and one of our neighboring CUDs has three extra that they're not gonna need for another six months and ours is on order, but it's not gonna get here for two months and we need it tomorrow, we can borrow one and pay it back when we get in kind when we get our piece of material. So we're working, we're working on these kinds of issues as well, so that we can work around the materials delays that we don't know the details of, but we're expecting something. Uh, similarly, similarly with construction, we've been told that it's going to be very difficult to get crews in the field, that there's a manpower shortage, and it's going to be hard to have folks available when you need them available. Uh, we've we've started coordination with our uh, contractors. We've talked to them early. We told them what they want to do. They know our plans. Um, we've been we've been told by our contractors that they will work through the week, winter. We've been told that they can have crews up here um, when we need them in this fall, and they know when we need them, and they know where we need them. So we're, we're having those discussions now to make sure that we're doing as much advanced planning as possible. Uh, we also are working in uh, deployment flexibility so that we have multiple DAs available at one time to a contractor so that if, if, if for any reason something occurs in one DA that's going to stop a contractor from working there, they can switch gears, move 15 miles and start working, continue working on another DA um, because that plan will be ready, it'll be in hand, and it'll be part of the scope of work. So our, our intention here is to give the contractor as much flexibility as possible to keep them working because the last thing we want is the contractor to send his crews away and tell them they'll bring them back when they can. Uh, so flexibility uh, for deployment of contractors is 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 really important. So you know, we know we haven't identified all of the potential risk items there, are, and there are certainly the infamous unknown unknowns that are out there. But for the things that we do know about, we've we've been trying to be very proactive on our on our risk management. 
Um, but in the things that I said I was going to talk about early on, one of the one of the things was costs. So let's 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 talk about costs. And remember that I had mentioned that I will tell you the things that I know for sure. So let's talk about where where our where our subscriber fees basically are going to come from, which is what they need to pay for. Uh, our design is going to be funded by grants. Much of our pre-construction, I can't say that every last bit of it, but much of our pre-construction will be funded by grants. The construction itself is in part funded by grants. The construction that we're starting uh, this fall is going to be 100% uh, grant funded. Eventually, the grant money is going to run out. Uh, rough estimate, 50% of our construction uh, design, pre-construction, construction funding, 50% of that lot uh, is going to be paid for by grants approximately. The rest needs to be paid for by loans. We don't know of any other place to get this money, even though we are looking for additional grants. The grants we've identified so far get us 50% there as an estimate. Uh, so we will need to go and 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 borrow money to continue our construction because we do not want to stop construction. Once we start in October, our intention is to keep construction workers in the field until we are built out. We we're, we are not looking to stop construction. So we will be getting loans. We will be working on loans in 2023 so that we will have those funds available either in the end of 2023 or in the beginning of 2024 to keep construction moving. So those loans are going to be need to be paid for by subscription fees. Installation, uh, we have grants that are going to installation. I want to say right now, I want to thank you to all of the towns that have dedicated some of their town ARPA money, some of that grant funding, to CV Fiber, mostly for the purpose of helping support the payment of, for installations. And we have a total now of $833,000 from, from our member towns that is being matched 100% uh, to give us uh, $1.6 million that is going to be put towards installations uh, based on our town's uh, matching funds. And I want to thank everyone that has been working towards doing that. That That is an incredible amount of money and it took a, a wonderful effort to do that and thank you everyone. Uh, the additional installation fees will need to be paid by subscribers. And of course, operations and maintenance, keeping us going, all will need to be paid for by subscribers. So we have worked these costs into development of our subscription fees. We will be carrying, of course, no profits, uh, but we will need to be financially sustainable because we won't be able to provide any services at all, at all if we don't exist. So financial stability is going to be key for CV Fiber, uh, but there is there is no profits, no shareholders, uh, just subscribers that 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 we need to answer to. So our subscription fees. And as I, as I mentioned, I will tell you what I know, they're still under development. They are extremely close to being finalized. Uh, we've been going through third-party verification. And as, as a matter of fact, just today, we had our maybe third or fourth meeting on third-party verification. Um, we've also had a truing up of our financial model based on the bids that we got from our construction contractors. So we had we had estimates that were in our financial model. Now those estimates are being are being trued up by the the uh, the actual bids that we got from contractors. Of course there will be additional uh, costs as well, but those are in our financial model as contingencies. Um, we are looking to provide the lowest fees possible that provide reliable service. That means we, we need to cover our maintenance. We, we need to cover, have, a, have our 
funds that support the loans that will be required to have funds available. We, we need to be able to uh, address contingencies. So we need to be financially viable, but whatever those lowest fees are that make us financially viable, that is what our fees are going to be. We're offering multiple service tiers uh, so that folks that, that want to get the super fast internet, you know, the gig and the two gig, uh, they'll be welcome to it. It'll be available. Uh, our minimum service will be 100 over 100. I'll talk about that again in a minute. Um, and of course, businesses, we will, we will have custom features for businesses that need more than just fast internet, that, that need, need other types of services that aren't necessarily uh, required for residential service. So our subscription fees are under development. Uh, as soon as they are available, folks will see them on our Crowd Fiber site, uh, and we will make them available on our website. Um, so we're uh, we're not withholding anything at all here. It's just that they're under development. Uh, but I do want to talk about digital equity because digital equity is something that we firmly believe in here. Uh, our minimum access is 100 over 100. That is a that is a very, very fast rate, um, and that 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 uh, uh, equality over up and down speed provides a level of service that is that is typically not available. Certainly, it's not available uh, through DSL. It's not available through cable, and even even some of the uh, early fiber um, networks, as you get up to one gig and two gig, have it having that symmetrical uh, is, isn't a capability. So we're, we're, we're moving forward with giving even the lowest access subscriber uh, digital equity here. And we are looking at two initiatives to also provide financial assistance to digital equity. We're working with the Equal Access to Broadband Initiative, EAB, which is uh, helping lay out, smooth the path to being able to access the government um, programs that are out there. We're also working with the Affordable Connectivity Program, making that accessible probably directly from our website so that folks don't have to hunt for uh, what to find out if they are access, if they have eligibility for these programs, what their eligibility is, what the requirements are. We want to make that as easy as possible. and. One of the things that we've noticed in talking with other providers is that these programs are very much underutilized. Uh, they're labor intensive um, for the for the provider to uh, to work with the, the the subscribers that need this access, but it's it's very very much underutilized, and and we're looking to step that up. We're, we're we are going to provide specialized outreach that has yet to be defined, uh, but we want to make sure that we don't settle for the industry average uh, for access for bringing access to the to the community that needs financial assistance. We're 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 uh, we're not going to settle for that. We're 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 going to move beyond that. Uh, so that 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 really is the uh, the the extent of of what I wanted to provide to folks. I'm happy to uh, answer questions or, you know, please visit our website, visit our website often, uh, CrowdFiber, um, and we'll be up and running with our website over the next few months. We we'll, are, of course, going to announce that uh, in our regular ways through, through uh, from Porch Forum and, and other outlets. Uh, we will be having another um, another one of these webinars in November, where hopefully we will be talking about the construction that's ongoing at that time, and uh, maybe even walking folks through uh, the the uh, access on our internet site. We'll see where we are at that time. Um, but I think it's uh, it's time for me to stop talking at the moment and uh, take any questions that that anybody might have. And at the moment, um, 
I'm hearing no questions, but I I will uh, I will wait for anyone who has a question. Hey, Mimi, welcome. I, I'll go on mute and, and let us know what's on your mind. So we have perhaps 350 feet between the phone pole and our home. Our current electric lines are buried underground. There's not a conduit. How does that last chunk of distance get taken care of and who pays for it? Well, that's a, that's 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 a very good question, and there are there are a number of variables there, some of which would take a field investigation to true up. Um, sometimes, when there's conduit, there's more than one conduit laid, so that there's actually an accessible conduit potentially. We have no conduit. There's there's no second conduit. Okay. There's no conduit at all. There's not a first conduit. The 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 electric line is just under the ground. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, well, certainly the fiber needs to be in a conduit. So, so that 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 conduit need that conduit needs to be laid. It is part of the installation process. We have not finalized with the towns how the ARPA money would help in in paying for or 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 supporting. Not necessarily a hundred percent. I don't want to speak for anyone here. Um, but our our intention is to make installation not be a barrier to entry. So we will we will be working with the towns to see how ARPA money can be used for that, and we we will also be working with uh, Waitsfield Telecom, who is our installer, to figure out the the best ways, especially with their experience because they've been doing this for many years. The, the the best ways to uh, to get that paid for if if for whatever burden of that falls on the subscriber and and I really don't know how much of that it will be but our our hope is that we'll be able to spend some of those ARPA funds to to support just that kind of of installation. Okay, thanks. Uh, now I saw I saw a hand up from uh, from Michael Mike Grant Mike Gray. Yes. Um, can you tell me what towns are in the first two DAs where construction is going to start? Uh, I, I, I can um, now, but, I, but I'm, I'm going to caveat that by explaining how this works, because the, the DAs are designated, the boundaries of the DA are totally an engineering construct. They are not a town jurisdiction jurisdictional construct. So we, in our high level design, figured out where the best place to put our terminals would be so that the, 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 the light doesn't lose its power over the distance that it needs to travel. And that told us how many terminals we need, where they need to be. And it also told us the shape of these DAs uh, so that we could get our service out to the underserved. So there are parts of Callus. There are parts of Worcester. There are parts of East Montpelier. I believe there's a slice of Middlesex. Uh, there may even be a corner of Marshfield. So it's and and then and Woodbury as well. There's a there's a slice of Woodbury in those first two DAs. And then as we move, as I said, around the clock, we're going to continue in that same fashion. So it's not like we're going to go Middlesex, Moortown, Northfield, Roxbury. It's going to be, you know, these DAs that have slices of multiple towns, which might have Middlesex and Waterbury and Duxbury. And on the other side, there might be some Cabot and Marshfield and 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 Woodbury. So it, it's it's really an engineering construct, not a town by town construct. Chunk, I, I I'd like you to move in on this too, please. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to point out that there is a question in the chat whether you would be willing to put up the DA map again, please. Uh, and you went on mute, Jerry. <laughs> okay, so yes, um, I am an analog person living in a digital world, just to make that clear. Uh, but I, I will go back to the slideshow.
And I will go back to the DA picture so somebody can take a screenshot of it. There you go. These are, these are our DAs uh, represented by the various colors. The shapes are really delineated by where the homes are, what the topography is, how far the light can travel from its terminal. Um, and, and you can actually see how these DAs are built on this slide, which is, is you know, just happens to be a, 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 a shot of multiple DAs. You can see on the lower right-hand corner, it says MA3, upper right-hand corner says MA01, and towards the center, it says CL01. This is just a random shot but you can see where we where we go right along the roads and identify the homes with our E911 database. Um, and that's how these DAs are built. So these are engineering engineering uh, constructs. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll take this down now and I'll entertain any other questions or comments. Um, Jerry, uh, there's, a, there's a question in chat and I think it's burning on a lot of people's minds here. Um, I will read it. Uh, so I'm not really clear. I think this is a very important question. Who pays to install the fiber from the pole to the home? If the homeowner is responsible and there are subsidies, who receives the subsidy? How is that determined? I'm not really clear what the answer is. Is that because CB fiber isn't sure yet? Some clarification would be helpful. Thanks. Well, that's 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 very good. And uh, and the, you, you, you are correct. It's because we have not fully ironed this out yet. Uh, so it will be uh, there. There will there's there's typically a minimum length where uh, the 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 fee is 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 a small standard fee. Uh, then there are as as the lengths. It depends on the amount of work that's required, right? As the as the as the as the lengths uh, extend, the fees typically go up. Uh, we have been working with the towns and their ARPA funds. Uh, to work out that those funds could be used to uh, support the subscriber in these fees, in the payment of these fees. And that's, we believe that's a very good way to use these funds because you know th that money is being used in the town because you know the subscriber lives in the town. And we are uh, working on an equitable way of doing that, which we haven't fully uh designed yet so i so the, and that's why it's not presented jerry you mind if i um jump in and offer a little additional please clarity? please chuck yeah so it's it's important to understand that there, there are numerous variables when it comes to that question there's is your current electricity above ground or below ground is your current electricity if below ground running through a conduit it is there already a second conduit for foam or or something like that 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 is running to your house and Unfortunately, each site is going to be different. Um, so CV Fiber will develop a standard policy that says up to a certain distance, pole to house above ground, we will we will just include that in the normal installation fee, and that will be that will be fine. Um, and then uh, below ground tends to be where it gets most expensive and most tricky. Um, and thank you, David. David Lawrence just posted in the chat uh, a, a link to EC Fiber's documentation on, on how to connect. It's a very good resource. I recommend you check it out uh, because our policy is probably going to end up fairly similar to that. But if you do live in a place where your electricity comes in underground, you are also going to have to have your fiber come in underground. And that means you are going to have to lay conduit. Now, in some places, you will be able to get grant subsidies to cover that cost where towns have agreed to put their ARPA money to, to that purpose, or, or there may be some other mechanisms we can tap into in the future, um, but not every town has agreed to do that. So this is not going to be universally true. And at the end of the day, it is going to fall to subscribers if there are no other sources of funds to be able to do that. Um, I know, for example, at my residence, we are unfortunately facing pretty hefty bill to, to install. Um, I, are there um, other, other, other questions or 
comments? Uh, Michael, Gray? Um, let's see. Yes. Um, on the website, is there, um, with the map with the DAs, is there like a town boundary overlay so that one can get a sense of um, the different um, DAs and, and what parts of what towns they encompass? And could you give me the code numbers for these first two DAs that are going to be where construction will begin? Sure, the first two DAs are CL01 and CL02. Okay. And the, uh, this, the, the CL designates the terminal that, that's, that's being used. And there are, there are three DAs that go with that terminal. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the third one is not going to be part of the very initial uh, build out that will happen in the spring. Okay. And uh, yeah, we can see about um, we can we can see about having a, a map of that type. That, that would be very informative, I think, if you could do that um, with just a layer with town town boundaries and then uh, superimposed on the the DA uh, areas. Very good point taken. Uh, Emily and John from Middlesex. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, so to kind of follow up on that question, one of your slides had the very detailed uh, DA map with the individual 911 addresses, I think that is. Is that something you're able to share or is that the thing that you're keeping under lock and key so the private sector competitors don't see that? I mean, I think that, that's like the theme here is we're all just dying to know when we are in the queue, you know? <laughs> I know, I know. For everyone. Well, so, um, so yeah, we're, we're kind of keeping that under lock and key for a number of reasons. One is that if it's, if, if, we're, if the design isn't finished, what you look, what you're looking at isn't final. So that so that's that's one aspect of that, but let me let me give a more general uh, a, a more general description here. We are starting this fall at the at the twelve o'clock position right of of of, of our uh, district. There's the donut hole in the middle that is Berlin, Montpelier, big part of East Montpelier, Barry, Barrytown that isn't underserved. So we're going around that, okay? Parts of Northfield. So the, 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 the other towns that make, up, that make up CV fiber, we will be working from 12 o'clock going down both sides of the clock, towards nine o'clock, towards three o'clock. And our intention is to build as fast and as far as possible. So we are hoping to build about 600 miles next year, construction year. If we build, if 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 we build 100 this year, we are hoping to build 500 next year for 600 miles by the end of 2023, and then the residual would be in 2024. If we can speed that up, we will speed that up. Now, the way I've described it, it sounds very smooth. It might get lumpy. There may be a problem DA that was originally uh, meant to be as the, as the work flowed. And we're going to have multiple construction contractors doing this, by the way. We're, we're not relying on a single contractor. So as we're, as we're going from, from down the side, there may be a DA that for whatever reason, we either have to skip or we have to leave not fully constructed because of because of whatever problem there might be in that DA, and that might jump another DA up the up the schedule, if you will, because the the, the 600 miles I'm talking about now just lost a DA. We'll make up for that somewhere else. Um, it's it's possible it's possible to go faster, but the stars really need to align. It's possible to go, go slower because we run into some kind of issue that either we didn't foresee or we foresaw the problem, but just didn't address it appropriately. Um, 
You know, this is this is a, a this is a real construction project. I mean, it's a fifty million dollar construction project. It takes time, uh, but we're hoping to have everybody by twenty twenty four eligible uh, eligible available for for service. That's our intention. Clarification, everybody who is presently underserved and on the power grid uh, by 2024. Thank, thank, thank you, Chuck. Please, um, you know, uh, right. Absolutely. I, I, I get used to talking to the about this to the folks that already, you know, know the know the jargon. So I apologize for that. We, we are talking about the underserved. Um, Additional additional questions. Question Very in good chat. question. By Will the way. we be coordinating with CV Fiber to move forward with installation after the DA construction is finished in our area? Would that be done through your website? What was the beginning of that one, Chuck? Could you read that again? Sure. Will we be coordinating with CV Fiber to move forward with installation after the DA construction is finished in our area? Would that be done through your website? I, 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 be, I believe the answer is uh, yes here. So our our intention is that you will you will be able to input. So so the DA the D, okay maybe maybe the, the the DA needs to be complete. We we talked about uh, testing and go live. So the DA needs to be fully tested on the network side to make sure that the that the network aspect the the hung fiber aspect works and we also need to do the the uh, go live testing aspect where we're working with uh, a handful of of early subscribers friendlies they're known in the industry to make sure that we have all the bugs out of that DA and that everything is working smoothly going back to Waitsfield Telecom so they can provide the service our intention is that you would be able to put your address into the website, see where you are in that process, whether or not construction is even started in your area, or whether construction is ongoing and we're starting to take, we're starting to uh, schedule installations and 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 a, uh, a tentative date and when installations are available, when when subscriptions can begin in that DA. That information should be on our website. Uh, as we're as we're moving through the process, so we're going to construct a DA. We're going to test a DA. We're going to we're going to make sure that that DA has all the redundancy and and all of the features that is, it needs to provide 100% of the service, and then folks can start subscribing to that DA while we're building the next one, and hopefully while we're building multiple DAs at that time. Uh, Janiel, uh, well, for, let me take a step back. Was that, did that sufficiently answer that question? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Janiel, I, I think you had your hand up there for a minute. This is Janiel Smith, our executive director. Yeah, and I think you did, I, I, you answered the question, Jerry, but I, I wanted to make sure that folks knew that we were working to get our website up and running through uh, CrowdFiber so that you will be able to put your specific address on the website and get uh, updated through a newsletter that tells you when you can expect service and details about how we're progressing. So that is something that we're currently working on um, and you will be able to sign up through our, through our website. So that will help everyone keep informed and also set expectations. And as plans might change or pivot, it would keep you updated depending on where you are. Okay, Chuck, I just saw that you answered that about uh, satellite connections. Uh, they, that that very good. That does not disqualify you. Um, John Walters, I, I see you have your hand up, sir. And you are on mute. Come on, there we go. Um, I, I I think I double clicked it. Um, uh, I mentioned this in the chat, but I wanted to reiterate it that uh, we do do our best to keep in touch with people who are interested in CV fiber. Uh, we do this primarily in a couple of ways uh, right now. 
Uh, one is regular postings twice a month on Front Porch Forum. So if you're on your community's Front Porch Forum, you will get those updates. Uh, and we also do have an email list and you can sign up, uh, no obligation, no cost, uh, on the CV Fiber website to get, uh, to get updates via email. That's all. Thanks, John. That's, 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 this is a good thing to mention while we have folks attention here. Thank you. Uh, other questions or comments? We will be doing this again in November. I, I don't have the date off the top of my head. I don't know if Chuck, if you if you have that date. You, no, it's I do not. I, maybe it hasn't been uh, determined yet. John, is your hand still up? Uh, not not uh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, OK, not intentionally. OK, <laughs> very good. Um, Trying well, to hand. OK, I'm off. OK, thanks. Thanks, John. Uh, if, if there are no more questions, uh, I just want to put out multiple thanks, one to everyone for taking the time to to listening to what we have to say here and for having patience with us. I, I know we all needed this high speed Internet yesterday, to say the least. So I appreciate your patience with us. When we roll it out, we want to roll it out once and for all. This is going to be a change that's going to enhance generations of Vermonters. Uh, so we, we're going to get it right. Um, and I want to thank all of the volunteers and, and, and everyone that works with us, our partners, again, our contractors. Thank you all for everything you do for CV Fiber. It, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing we're doing here. Uh, if there's nothing left, Chuck, is there anything anything in the chat that's hanging out there that we need to address before we go? Um, there was just a quick question about contacting us. I want to point out that on our website, we have a forum where you can contact our general inbox for, for general questions. And you can also contact your town delegates or a specific community, uh, sorry, uh, committee within uh, within CB Fiber. So if you want to reach uh, any of those three options, you can do that right on our website, on our contact form. I also want to say CB Fiber came into being four and a half years ago. It has been a grind to get to this point and a lot of blood, sweat and tears poured into it by a lot of volunteers, some who are working near full time on this endeavor. And, and for that, I give a lot of thanks. Uh, and we are close people. We are we are literally breaking ground within weeks uh, and and we'll actually have our first service areas uh, within a few months. And, and uh, so, you know, after a four and a half year slog, I know it can be hard to wait that long to to see service at your actual house when when it's your Internet you're talking about. Um, but know that we are doing everything we can to bring it to your house as as quickly as we possibly can. The, the pictures you saw of the fiber, um, that's our fiber in our yard. Um, and our intention is to hang it right by your house. <laughs> and we will in time. So thank you, everybody. Good night. Uh, really appreciate your attention. And we hope to uh, see you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye, all. I'm going to stop the recording and we'll be done. <laughs>